kids, welcome to Stylus Rumble compositing time thing. So today we have a request that we're going to do. We're going to do some compositing. Now I've just found this stock image because I'm too lazy to make new stuff. We're going to play with doing some backlighting and just blowing some stuff up, getting some nice sunbeams and stuff. Oh, secret stick man. All right, so I've grabbed the stock image. Now, if you're ever going to use stock images for a purpose, let me just get the Google over here. So if you go to Google Images, go to your tools here in your Googly tools. And under usage rights, if you put labeled for reuse, labeled for reuse for modification, labeled for non commercial So you can choose like labeled for reuse. So now things that people have allowed you to reuse, you can type in woods and you're going to get stuff that's been labeled, like not filtered by license or for non-commercial use, stuff like this. So sometimes it has to be modified, non-commercial reuse with modification, stuff like that. So you want to make sure that you're using something that has the rights available to you. And also, if you're looking at stock images from a particular site, like there's lots of DeviantArt people who do stuff like that, who put out stock images for use, see if they have any uh, requests upon reusing their stuff, uh, if they want to be credited or whatever. All that stuff's important. So this is just a stock image of a forest because I just uh, too tired to draw you guys as a forest. I have some in-progress forests, but I don't have any finished forests. And also because I had to reinstall Harmony like three times, none of my favorites are favorited yet. Oh, I just haven't bothered. So bear with me as I type in for these things. What I'm going to do, the request I had from Svetlana was, she was linked to this, the 2D animation demo reel from Daily Tune. And this scene in particular where the backlighting through these trees is like really blown out and they're getting some fun light. So go check out Daily Tune and their pretty stuff because they've got lots of pretty stuff. And we're just going to blow this out. So here I'm just using this stock image of a forest. The next thing you want to do is grab a chroma key. I've already done this because it takes a little bit of time, but by hooking up a chroma key, this is the sort of thing you'd use if you were doing a green screen edit. So if you brought in live action footage where the character's in front of green screen, you could open up your chroma key, tell this that it's set to neon green, and it's going to have a really easy time picking up that color because it's something very big in contrast. So if you have an image like this where you've got a decent amount of contrast, we've got some really nice bright whites here that we want to isolate, we can select that color and it's going to have a decent time trying to pick that up. You're going to have to play around in your settings here, figure out how much exactly you need to bring down the white or the black point, like just play with whichever one seems the best there. So that seems like we're losing a little bit too much white. So in an image like this, it's a good starting point for isolating the areas that you want to play with, but it, it won't necessarily give you the ideal situation, depending on how big a contrast your image has. A lot of the times I get images nowadays that are just neon on top of neon because the current trend is like a Lisa Frank color scheme. So you might have to go in and draw your own mat. So so here I've got the chroma key, which I need to plug in, as well as I've drawn my own mat where I wasn't getting the clean edges I wanted. So my overall mat looks like this. So if I was to use this as a cutter here, you could see exactly what I'm picking out of that image is just all those whites there in the tree. So now I'm going to be able to play around with those lights and do some fun stuff with it. The two options for blowing this stuff out and getting these big like hazy lights in there are the glow and the bloom. So both of these kind of have different advantages and disadvantages. 99% of the time I go with the glow just because it's a little bit easier and it's I'm more familiar with it, but the bloom has some fun options. The bloom also has its own mask built in or like a threshold here. So if I just plug this straight in, it's going to bloom out these lights decently. It's going to do a nice little job of just picking out where there's bright highlights and kind of blurring them out. You can play around here with your threshold. If you bring it way down, you're going to get much brighter lights. And if you keep it higher, then it's going to kind of shrink in your mask. Boop. Turn up your gamma, you're going to get it a little bit brighter and you can turn down your gamma and it's going to get brighter as well. And you also have a blur. So your radius here, you can blur those lights, and get it really hazy. So now it's coming quite a bit in front of these other ones. I can take it away, bring it back. And you can kind of see what it's doing here. 
you can also turn off the source image here. So I can just take that off. This is what it's overlaying on top to get that look if that's something you need. I'm not sure why it would, but it's available. But the fun thing about the bloom is it has these other options here. So you can invert. You've got the upside down coming in here and getting all creepy. It's got a little screen is what we're using, light and difference. So there's lots of different options in here to get some blooms and like now it looks like it's um, like a storm back there. So if you want to play around with Think of like your Photoshop filters, your screen, your multiply, stuff like that. Then you're going to want to go with the bloom. The reason I like the glow, unfortunately, it doesn't just plug and play. You do need this uh, masking stuff, but it's that's I don't know, it's OK. I find it worth it. So we're going to use our image here in our image port and then our chroma key and stuff as the cutter, as the mask. Then we can add the glow effect to this kind of the long way around. But the best thing about this is instead of using the source color, we could use whatever color we want. Let's turn, let's turn it on a little bit. Got to turn our blur up, turn our glow up. So now we can have the aliens coming. Uh, that's a possibility if you want to have some sort of a rave or something back there. So you can play with the color of the lights and I find that really fun. So you can have a nice golden light. I just, I like playing with the, the rainbows. <laughs> if you if you just use the source color, uh, you're gonna get a similar thing to your bloom when you're using the screen effect or the add effect. You can also, if you want it to darken, you can multiplicative it. So then it's a multiply instead of a screen. That's too bright. Right, so that, that looks kind of nice. So just for recap, this is using the glow and this is using the bloom. So bloom, glow. Bloom, glow. So really, you know, cho choose whatever you like. Let's, let's, eh, we'll use the, the bloom. This is then we can get rid of a lot of stuff because the bloom has its own little map thing and we are going to keep our network a little bit cleaner. So next I'm going to throw in just some sunbeams. Now the easiest way to do this, oh, this does have a mat port by the way. So you can just plug your mat in here. You don't need an extra cutter or anything. That's kind of neat. Oh, bloom, I should use you more. But for our sunbeams, instead of doing like a big crazy thing, I know when we were doing our water effects, we were doing some caustics. But the thing is when you're in a forest, the stuff often doesn't move. So you don't need moving beams really. You can just kind of pick a direction you want your beams to come from. And and you can just slap some in there whatever way you want it to look. It gives you ultimate control over what your beams look like. You can have them cut out where there's trees. Something like that. That looks, that looks all right. We can split that beam up. And then we can just throw in gradients. Gradients are a compositor's best friend. And we want it stronger up by the source. And we want it to taper out. So you can copy and paste with your gradient editor. That's what I'm using up here. Your tools, your edit gradient and texture. This works on your textures. It works on your gradients and you can copy this and then paste it and then sneak it over. That's something that a lot of people don't realize and it's going to save you a lot of time. And if you have a bunch of frames one after the other and you're trying to get gradients in there, oftentimes you can cause yourself a real headache trying to get that consistent if you don't know that you can just paste it. So there we go. We've got our beams and what we can do again is we can use our stock image and we can cut that using our beam. Blur radial. I wish my favorites, ugh, I gotta update my favorites because this is annoying having to go searching. So now these beams, I'm going to blur the, the beam itself. So let me unplug this stuff. Here's my beam and I'm going to blur these guys. So now instead of just being a gradient, they're a, a soft edged gradient. And I mean, we could just change our color here instead of this like super bright red. We could do like a beam color like that. And that looks all right. We could throw a transparency on there so we could play with how much or how little we want that to be seen. So that looks all right for beams. Beams on, beams off, beams on, beams off. We could also use this here as a cutter for any number of our filters. We got a brightness contrast filter, so blue. What we can do is play around with that. We can just turn up the brightness of our whole image. And then we can have that only visible through our beams. 
So here's with the brightness contrast filter and here's without it. So these look a little bit flatter. These are a little bit more integrated. They look like they're blasting out some of this bark. So if you look at the texture of the tree here, that's with the contrast filter and that's without. So you can see this is on top of, it's like you're putting an opaque thing on top of it. Whereas with the contrast filter, it actually feels like it's uh, involving the bark a little more. It feels like it's integrated into the image. That feels kind of nice, right? So this is feeling a little bit glowy. Here's our original image and here's with our compositing on. So it's definitely feeling more like those enchanted forest things where they blow everything out way too much. So this isn't feeling like enough. We need to go even farther. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna throw lens flare in there. <laughs> yeah, now it's blown out. Before we were just joking. We were just kidding around. <laughs> Now it's like, you know, some JJ Abrams style blown out stuff. So here's our original. Yeah. So the lens flare is actually, it's got some cool little stuff in it. Each of these little images actually corresponds to one of these tabs in here. So it's got up to 10 images and you can customize this. You can draw your own images. You can draw little stars and stuff and slap them in there. But each of these things here, if we up the size here real quick, you can see that that's belong to this one, this circle around our haze here, this guy here, we pump him up real big. That's our white circle here. Oh, it's easier to just enable and disable. Merp. Okay, you get it. Enable, disable, much easier. You can add drawings. So here it has custom flares. You can draw in your own thing. This thing's a monster size. In the very first global tab, we have flare type. Type one is going to give you this kind of generic lens flare, kind of what you expect to see. Type two gives you this hexagonal one. So that's also a good and fun option. And then there's custom. And this is where you could actually go in, add a drawing like this. Let's put our drawing here in our composite. We're gonna draw a star. And now we can plug our star into our lens flare and our <laughs> lens flare is going to have a star as it's like, origin point. So I, I mean, I'm probably just going to use this generic one because it's super great, but that's something fun to play around with. Okay. So the, the first one, the custom flares go in here. Next you have the transformation. So that you're going to plug a peg into because it's green and you don't need to render this. So that's a little bit nice. And transformation is just what you think. You can scale it. You can move it around. You can rotate it move where you need it to be. And then the last one, the flare position, this one's a little bit fun because you can kind of play around with how these guys interact with one another. I mean, you can put a peg in there or you can actually just hit shift F11 when you're selecting your lens flare and it's going to give you a gooey handle. And so you're going to be able to say, okay, here's my sun right here. That's where I need my guy to be. Now I'm starting to lose this little white circle up here. So if I want to, I can come in here and figure out which one is the boss there. Okay. And that's flare eight. And you're going to be able to move the position of that guy if he's getting too far off where you want him to be. So you can kind of move him around a little bit. I'm going to transform it so that it's I really want this to take up a lot of screen. You know, I'm gonna put two lens flares. JJ Abrams, you're my hero. <laughs> Wee! My husband hates JJ Abrams so much. Oh, he got so mad when he was doing Star Trek. Uh, it made me laugh. Nice. There you go. So now. You can't see anything. Oh, the good thing about these lens flares too, they're really sharp. So you can come in here in this passive window and you can affect the blur on every single one of these. If that's a thing. Where am I, where did even go? I unplugged them. I'm so dumb. Well, <laughs> that's weird. If you give them a bitmap comp, they just flatten everything and make them disappear. That's cool. Well, what happens if I turn this new pass through? Wow, that's neat. Cool, so we can see what we're doing a little better here since that's on. But this guy, you can see we're affecting the color of it. So we don't have to have a white one. We can have a neon gold or whatever, whatever floats your boat. That feels kind of, that feels all right. Like I said, you can blur each guy in here or you can actually add a blur, a blur radial. 
least that's pretty much my favorite. So you can soften it. You don't have to have those super crisp things and you can have a little bit of camera blur on there. Bring this back to a pass through. And now you're not getting like, I just feel like it's a little bit too much of a crisp circle on there. I may even go in and find these guys and blur them out a little bit more. But now for realsies, this is blown out. <laughs> you can hear my fan, my computer fan probably, because this has got to render all these things. So here's before and here's after. Much more obnoxious. <laughs> so hopefully you can take this for yourself and blow out your scenes too. We, there's a lot of this blooming and stuff on Ever After, but it was done in other programs like Nuke and After Effects. So there you go. Let me just remind you guys, I was playing with the Bloom node. A lot of blurs and gradients, they're going to be your bread and butter when you're doing compositing. Got a brightness and contrast in here. That's what I did with these sunbeams to get a little bit more texture on the trees. I was playing with the glow for a little while. And remember, you can get some nice lighting colors here. So if you had to do a rave, you'd probably go with the glow. Whereas if you had to do this like fairy forest thing, you might go with the bloom because it's a little bit, a little bit more flexible there. But that's it. Now we've got this beautiful lighting scenario. We can all go have magical enchanted fairy dreams. So if you have any other ideas for things you'd like to be compo see composited in harmony from, it could be a movie or it could just be a still image, anything that you guys come across. You're like, how would I do this? Let me know. Or of course, rigging stuff, effect stuff. I'm here for all that jazz. I want to make a list of things I can do so I don't have to use my own brain. That's it for this. I feel like I can say that I've I've pushed this enough. I can go a little farther, but no, no, this is good. No, that's just not good. So like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do, and I will see you in the next video.